All right, guys, what's up? This is Alex Christopher with the Duran, and I wanted to get to you guys a real quick video from Nigel Farage speaking to the European Parliament on the 16th of January. Uh, I imagine this video took place, this speech took place after the vote on um, May's Brexit withdrawal agreement with the European Parliament. And Nigel Farage is addressing the people in the EU as to what happened and what's going on. This is a great, great speech. And, you know, we've been covering Brexit with Alexander Mercurius really, really in depth for the past couple of weeks. And Alexander has been giving great insight as to what's happening with the entire Brexit process and the entire Brexit debacle. Every now and then, it's just great to hear from Nigel Farage. I've been waiting for Nigel Farage to give a speech as to what's been going on with the Brexit process for a while now. This is it. He touches on all the main points. He talks about how Blair is conspiring to get to a second referendum. He talks about how the European Union has the UK exactly where they want them. He talks about the process of delaying Article 50 and how that delay will eventually lead to a second referendum vote. And he talks about how getting continuous votes and getting that process of voting over and over again is a practice that the European Union has really come to, to rely on and has, has used in multiple, multiple inst instances to get the outcome that it wants. So this is nothing new for the EU. And here you have Nigel Farage sitting in the EU parliament telling them exactly that. Farage also issues, I, I don't want to say a warning, but kind of a call to action. And he says that if you push the UK citizens too far, if you push the British people too far, then it's going to be a lion that roars. And that's towards the end of his speech. It's a great, great speech in the European Parliament. Take a look at it. Let us know what you think. If you like it, click on the subscribe button down below and also click that notifications bell. We will be having another Brexit video going online. I like to say in a couple hours, keep posted for that as well. It's with Alexander Mercurius once again. And we break down the Theresa May no confidence uh, vote that took place yesterday as well. Take care, everybody. Your Excellency, Mr. Barnier, Your Excellency, Mr. Timmermans, these are the terms that the British Prime Minister used in her begging letter just a couple of days before the Brexit vote. And I think the fact, the fact she used those terms is entirely consistent with the entire negotiation. I realised on the 8th of December 2017 where this was going, where to meet a deadline set by Mr. Barnier, an unelected bureaucrat in Brussels, the Prime Minister left Downing Street at quarter past four in the morning to fly to meet you, and running up to the deadline, she signed up to the principal of the Irish backstop. The pass was sold from that moment. It has been throughout a total failure of leadership, but perhaps more significantly, she hasn't learnt or heeded the historical lesson that if you appease bullies, they always come back for more. She's behaved like a leader of a nation defeated in war. And that is why this withdrawal agreement looked more like a surrender document and it was smashed to pieces in the House of Commons last night. She, of course, believed that she'd get some concessions from you today, but it's perfectly clear with what you've said, there are no concessions to come. She is still our Prime Minister and that of itself is quite remarkable. If she had any sense of honour, she'd be gone by lunchtime today. There are some, Mr Barnier, there are some here who say you've wasted two years of your life. I disagree completely because you've got us now exactly where you want us. And that's despite the fact that 500 MPs voted for Article 50, which of course makes very clear that there are two years in which the negotiator withdrawal agreement or we just leave. And that was backed up, of course, by the Act of Parliament, the Withdrawal Act, which once again says, unconditionally, we leave on the 29th of March. Now, uh, Mr President, you say there's no support for no deal, but then you all thought there was no support for Brexit in the first place. You might be surprised how quickly public opinion is changing. Mr Timmermans, you say this would cause great harm. But if we leave on no deal, if we stick to the law as it is, we become an independent country. And I would say to you, what price freedom? Yeah, yeah. But I'll be the first to admit, I doubt this will happen. 
because working in cahoots with you, we have Mr Blair and many other leaders of the British establishment who treat the Brexit vote and treat voters in general with total and utter contempt. And there is a great tradition here, isn't there? You, we've seen it with Denmark and with Ireland. You make people vote again. All I can say is if we finish up with an extension of Article 50, we may well finish up fighting the next set of European elections. And we will fight them. And if the betrayal becomes complete and we are forced to vote in a second referendum, you may be in for a big surprise. The British may be a very placid people, very laid back, but I promise you, if they get pushed too far, it's a lion that will roar. We will be even more defiant if we have to fight a second referendum and we'll win it by a bigger majority. Yeah, yeah.